Hello, welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at what is the derivative of sine x. Of course, with respect to x. <clears throat> and so, most of you probably already know that the answer is cosine x, but let's have a look at its actual proof. And on the way of proving uh, this derivative, we will also need to uh, find, and uh, we also need to, uh, to prove geometrically a certain limit, uh, which is often referred to the limit, uh, because it's uh, pretty much the only one which has to have a geometric proof instead of an algebraic one. So first of all, uh, let's begin by using a formula that we've proved in the past to be true. That is the formula of the derivative. So the formula goes like this. f prime of x, or the derivative of f of x, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we can just uh, replace f of x with sine of x to get that this is just the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. Okay? <clears throat> now, uh, it doesn't seem that there we have much to work with, but now we're going to look at our second formula, which I haven't proved, uh, any time in the past, <clears throat> but if you want to, I can uh, do a whole another video about uh, all of the <clears throat> all of these trigonometric uh, uh, formulas. So this uh, formula goes like this. So if we have sine of alpha minus sine of beta, and alpha of beta represents uh, some angles then this is always equal to 2 times the sine of alpha minus beta over 2 times the cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. So uh, you can e uh, clearly see why we're using this formula. It can easily be applied to here. And then instead of uh, working with the difference of signs, uh, we'll be working with a product of a sine and cosine. And that's always a little easier to work with, especially when we're talking about limits and all of that stuff. So uh, let's substitute this. Let's substitute this into this formula. So in this case, alpha is x plus h, and beta is x. So we have that alpha minus beta over two is x plus h minus x over two which is h over 2. Okay? Now, alpha plus beta over 2 will give you x plus h plus x, which is 2x plus h over 2, which is also equal to x plus h over 2. Okay, now that we have that, uh, let's just uh, put this in as 2 times the sine of this times the cosine of this. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 sine of h over 2 times the cosine of x plus h over 2 all over h. Now that we have that out of the way, we can get rid of these uh, alphas and betas. We don't need them anymore. 
Okay, now another uh, little change that I want to make here. Uh, it's very simple because we have all of these h over 2's and we have this 2 at the top and this uh, lonely h at the bottom. Uh, so, just so everything would be uh, this kind of h over 2, I want to get rid of this 2 and make this into an h over 2 at the bottom, which we can do. And now, <clears throat> because h approaches 0, I can replace uh, something like theta with h over 2, and theta will also approach 0. So I can say that I want to replace, again, theta as h over 2 over here, and that will mean that theta also approaches 0, because h also approaches 0 in the first place. Meaning that the limit that we get is the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta times cosine of x plus theta. Now, another thing that I want to notice here is that plugging into here, theta is equal to zero, just into this cosine bit will just give you cosine x. And there's no problem with that, cosine x is always good. So, we could just uh, take this cosine of x plus h out of the limit and have that this is cosine of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of sine theta over, uh, sorry, as theta approaches 0, uh, sine, oh, sine theta over theta. Okay, now uh, you might be thinking, uh, well, when plugging in the theta uh, approaches 0 into here, we get 0 over 0. Uh, so, this can be a good scenario to use L'Hopital's rule, uh, which uh, is basically like uh, a formula f uh, for proving derivatives, or if you have in a limit a case of uh, infinity over infinity, <clears throat> which can also be zero over zero, simply by taking the reciprocal of the top and bottom, which doesn't change. <clears throat> you can use L'Hopital's rule, which tells you to take individually the derivative of the top and the bottom, with respect to what you're taking the limit of, in this case theta, and then calculate the limit uh, that you get. So in this case, we will get the the limit as theta. <clears throat> we'll get the limit. So first, first of all, cosine x times the limit as theta approaches zero of the derivative of sine theta with respect to theta, of course, over the derivative of theta, which is 1. Uh, and because it's, that's in the denominator, they'll just cancel. Uh, and then, but now we run into a problem. Because, although this is true, what we're trying to find is the derivative of sine x originally. We, and we don't know what it is yet. So we can just use the derivative of sine theta here. It doesn't get us anywhere. Meaning that we'll have to use a different strategy to, uh, to find this limit. And uh, this is the limit that I was talking about. Which has to uh, have a geometric proof. <laughs> 
proof uh, in order to prove it. So, uh, let's keep uh, this on the top of the, let's clear the board, keep this on the top of the board, and look at our geometric proof uh, of the limit. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the setup and uh, what we built here. So, we, uh, of course, we have the X and Y axis, uh, and then we, we constructed the unit circle, which is basically a circle huh, centered at the origin, which has a radius of one unit, which is why it's called the unit circle. And, now, and then we're going to, uh, to draw a radius here. Uh, and uh, do something like this. So, uh, where it hits the circle, where it hits the circle, uh, we drop a perpendicular to the y-axis, like this. And, also from the edge here, uh, we draw another line perpendicular to the y-axis until it hits uh, this radius, uh, or the continuation of the radius. So, uh, and what we're going to use uh, to prove this limit is the squeeze theorem, which essentially says if we have something like f of x smaller than or equal to g of x which is smaller than or equal to h of x and as x approaches a value like a we have that f of x approaches a limit out uh, from below of course and h of x will approach that same limit L from above. The squeeze theorem says that g of x will also approach L. Or in a simpler term, <clears throat> uh, f and, and f of x and h of x will basically squeeze in on the value of g of x as x approaches a certain value if f and h both approach the same value until uh, like at this ca at the case of x at, uh, case of x approaching a, uh, we'll get the g of x uh, also has a limit equal to l. We don't know from uh, from above or below, but we know that it is equal to l. Uh, so now we got that out, out of the way. Let's erase this and look at our proof. So. <clears throat> We'll mark uh, this angle between the radius and the x-axis as theta, which is our angle. And then we're going to look at three areas. So first of all, we have this small, tri small right triangle. Uh, so it has points here, here, and here. Next, we're going to look at the area of a segment of a circle. Uh, so it also uh, has these sort of cur corners at the same points, but instead of having uh, a straight line here, it has a, uh, a, a curve of a circle here, which uh, we, we have as a segment of uh, the the circle. And then the final area we're looking at is the big triangle which is caused from this uh, a little longer line than this one. Uh, so, then, so this line and then the, the radius and the x-axis which comes from these uh, three points. In. Okay, now let's uh, see. So, uh, the first area we'll mark as S1, 
the second area will mark as S2, and the third area will mark as S3. And you can clearly see that, first of all, if theta is equal to zero, then all of these are equal. But in the case of theta isn't zero, uh, we get that S1 is smaller than S2, which is smaller than S3. Meaning that this is always smaller than or equal. Which all, uh, already gives us um, the sort of a squeeze the uh, theorem look. Now we just have to find this formulas for S1, S2, and S3 based on theta. So the first one isn't that hard. Uh, because this is a right triangle, and this is 1, because this is the unit circle, and this is a radius, we have that this is equal to cosine theta, and this oh, uh, and this little line is equal to sine theta, giving us an area of sine theta times cosine theta over 2. Because this is a right triangle, we simply have to multiply this length by this length and divide by 2. Okay? Now, looking at our segment of the circle, uh, so there's a formula for the area of the segment of the circle, and it's not that hard to prove, and it states that if you have a segment of the circle, which um, the angle between the two radii is equal to theta, uh, then the area is theta times the radius squared over 2. But because our radius is equal to 1, r squared is equal to 1, and so theta, and so we simply have theta over 2. And now, finally, for the third area, we know <coughs> that that entire length is uh, a radius, uh, which has a length of 1, <coughs> meaning that this little uh, longer ledge is, uh, because this is theta and this is a right triangle, uh, has the length of uh, tangent theta. Uh, and then again multiply tangent theta by 1, divide by 2, to get that the third area is tangent theta over 2. So, uh, first thing I want to do is take tangent theta and turn it into sine theta over 2 cosine theta and uh, just, so we're working just with sine, cosine, and theta and then next uh, I just want to cancel out all of these twos so this cancels, this cancels, and this cancels and then next uh, as theta, uh, because we're letting theta approach zero here from above, so as theta approaches zero from above, sine theta will obviously be positive, meaning that we can safely divide by sine theta here. So we get that cosine theta is smaller than or equal to theta over sine theta, which is smaller than or equal to 1 over cosine theta. And now again, because theta approaches 0 from above, cosine theta, theta, sine theta, and cosine theta are all positive, value, positive values, meaning that if we take the reciprocal of each one of these, we simply have to flip these signs. So uh, bigger than or equal turns to smaller than or equal. And so after taking the reciprocal, we, sim we simply get that cosine theta, which is the reciprocal of 1 over cosine theta, is 
smaller than or equal to, because before it was bigger than or equal to, to sine theta over theta, which is the reciprocal of this, and then that's finally smaller than or equal to 1 over cosine theta, which is the reciprocal of cosine theta. And uh, now we're perfectly set uh, for the squeeze theorem. So, uh, basically what we're going to do is <coughs> uh, have <coughs> theta, of course, approach 0 from above. As theta approaches 0 from above, we of course get that cosine theta approaches 1 from below because cosine 0 is equal to 1 and cosine theta is always smaller than or equal to 1. And then we have this smaller than or equal to sine theta over theta. And of course as theta approaches 0 from above or 0 zero plus, and then this is smaller than or equal to one, whatever one of your cosine theta approaches, this theta approaches to zero from above, which is one from above, because cosine theta approaches one from below, it's pretty easy to see that uh, it's reciprocal, instead of coming from below, will come from above. Uh, can it, pretty clearly see that, uh, that this will approach 1 from above. And if, and if you uh, don't see it, you can just check a graph of 1 over cosine theta and see that the closer it gets to 0 from above, uh, it'll, go, it'll go down, 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 get closer and closer to 1. And now we can, uh, we can simply just apply the squeeze theorem and we get that the limit as theta approaches zero from above, not, and we still have to check from below, of sine theta over theta is equal to one. But now this isn't the full limit. Because we also need uh, to establish what happens when, when theta approaches zero from below. But that's super easy. If we look at the limit as theta approaches zero from below of sine theta over theta, we can simply replace theta with negative theta. So instead of theta approaching zero from below, it will approach it from above. And we'll have sine of negative theta, which is negative sine of theta and negative theta. And those negatives will cancel out to simply get us the same exact limit, but as theta approaches zero from above, which is also equal to one again. So and what whether this is a uh, plus or a minus, uh, this will always equal 1, meaning uh, that we can finally conclude that the limit as theta approaches 0 from any direction of sine theta over theta is equal to 1. And now, finally, we calculated what is the limit and we got that it is equal to 1 and then simply uh, putting it in here <clears throat> at the top we finally get that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine of x and then from, uh, from here on out after this uh, big proof, uh, we can finally establish, establish other things like the derivative of cosine. Uh, and uh, we can simply use the fact that cosine of x is just sine of pi over 2 minus x. Then we can find the derivative of tangent x, cotangent x, and all of that stuff. And finally get into the trigonometric uh, 
world of functions. And so, that's it. If you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more things like this in the future. And finally, that's it.